An Ohio city is about to make a big mistake selling part of its land to Norfolk Southern, and I need almost no introduction to explain why this is a bad thing, because if there's one thing that Norfolk Southern is good at, it's generating absolutely terrible PR. Cue the montage. Norfolk Southern, what's your function? Cooking up the country, helping business run. Norfolk Southern, Helping this big country move ahead as one. Are you someone that watches YouTube videos at lunchtime while maybe using your work's Wi-Fi, possibly watching a problematic video that your work might disagree with ideologically? If that's you, you are probably in the market for getting a VPN. NordVPN helps you stay safe, secure while browsing the internet, especially when you're on a public network like your company's Wi-Fi. While using a VPN, you can rest assured that your internet traffic will be hidden from view from any public network. NordVPN also comes with cool features like MeshNet that allows you to access shared files on all devices and even use MeshNet as a local area network for gaming. Get NordVPN 2Y plan plus four months free here at my link NordVPN slash Alan Fisher. It's risk free for Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Anyway, let's get started by talking about some history. In the 1800s, the Ohio Constitution banned municipal governments from working with stock and private companies to build and or finance infrastructure. So if you were a city and wanted to build a large railroad that started or began in your city, you'd have to either hope that a company would completely finance a railroad, or you'd have to figure out another option. The city of Cincinnati, fearing the loss of shipping traffic to other cities, wanted a railroad to connect themselves to other southern cities and ports, so they decided to finance a railroad using municipal bonds. In 1869, construction started on a 337-mile-long railroad. The railroad ended up stretching all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio, through Kentucky, all the way to Chattanooga, Tennessee, close to the border of Georgia. To this day, this remains the longest railroad owned by a single municipal government in North America. Through the years, the line has been leased out to a few different railroads, most notably the Southern Railroad and most recently Norfolk Southern. Now what do I mean by lease? Well, railroads are made up of three core things. The rolling stock, aka the cars and locomotives, the tracks and infrastructure, and most importantly, the land, or as most people call it, the right-of-way. You put these three things together, and you have a railroad. These three things are what allow railroads to operate properly within the US, and they go from the least to most important here. You can't have trains without track, and you can't have track without land rights. So, in this situation, Cincinnati owns and leases the most important part of the railroad, the land. It doesn't take much of an imagination to figure out why it would be bad for Norfolk Southern to purchase the land outright. But let's go over some key reasons why it's good for a government entity like the city of Cincinnati to own the land and oversee Norfolk Southern's operations. Starting off, let's talk about the obvious trade-off. Proponents of the sale will talk about the big cash infusion of $1.6 billion if the train line is sold. This money would go to repairs for bridges, roads, and other infrastructure according to the mayor. What isn't mentioned is that the city is already making money off of this train line. The city leases the 337 mile long line to Norfolk Southern at roughly $25 million a year. So if you were to keep charging that same lease, you'd make the $1.6 billion back anyway in 64 years. That's not even accounting for the fact that the city already adjusts the lease for inflation. So 64 years is the worst case scenario. You'd probably make 1.6 billion back in about 45 to 50 years instead. And remember, that doesn't mean that the city stops charging NS after 50 years. No, the city can keep this income stream forever. So if someone wants to argue that it's a smart financial decision to sell the line off, no, that's a complete lie. But that's only our first point for not selling it. Speaking about money, we have to talk about tax incentives. 
So when you want to force a business to act in a certain way, but you don't want to pass very specific laws, you can always incentivize businesses to do what you want by giving them a tax break if they build something or if they act in a certain way. For Norfolk Southern, you could say that you want them to build more safety devices on the train line to prevent another East Palestine. Well, then you could just give them a tax incentive to do just that. Or say that you want to force them to put up electrification so that they stop polluting locally with their diesel trains, you could just make extra taxes for them running diesel locomotives and offer a tax break for if they put up electrification and run electric locomotives. There are various options that the government has to force companies to do what they want with just taxes, but if the line is completely sold off to Norfolk Southern, all of these options are off the table. And lastly, along with using tax incentives to your advantage, the city could also force Norfolk Southern to meet other demands. One of those demands could be allowing Amtrak to run on the line. This would allow Amtrak to run a service from Cincinnati to Lexington to Chattanooga and any stops in between. Plus, maybe a little extra extension to Atlanta, Georgia, too. Either way, the city loses its bargaining power for passenger rail if the line is sold. So if you want more passenger service to Cincinnati, do not let them sell the line. If there's no reason to sell it, why is it being offered in the first place? The short answer is that your mayor is probably corrupt. I'm Aftab Purval. Cincinnati has a backlog of $400 million in needed repairs to city infrastructure. By selling this old freight railway, we will have the money to fix that. Yup, that's your boy over lame stock music talking about how you need to sell the railroad or else. Would it surprise you to find out that his campaign treasurer also happens to be the campaign treasurer for the group promoting the sale of the railroad? Also, that group is almost entirely bankrolled by Norfolk Southern themselves? Hmm, interesting. This is extremely suspect to the point where I'm wondering how much he's going to get personally paid by Norfolk Southern. Either way, even past all of my other arguments that I laid out earlier in this video, this one should be ringing alarm bells for you right now. If you want more information specifically on the mayor and his ties to the sale, I recommend going and reading your local news station's articles on this. WCPO has done some great reporting and they should be commended for their work on this. Anyway, unlike some lame centrist infographic channel, I'm going to tell you what to do to prevent the sale because unless you're Norfolk Southern, this does not benefit you. If you live in Cincinnati, do the opposite of what your mayor is telling you and vote no on issue 22. If you don't live in Cincinnati, try to contact anyone that you know that does live there and convince them to vote no on issue 22. Otherwise, if you want to support groups that are opposing the sale, there's a group called Derail the Sale, and Railroad Workers United has been vocally speaking up against it since the beginning. I'm hoping that the railroad doesn't get sold, and I'm hoping that this sparks Cincinnati citizens to get further involved in railroads politics. Doing any of the beneficial things that I listed earlier, like running a new Amtrak service, would be absolutely fantastic. I'd like to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and I'd like to thank my Patreons and channel members for supporting me and allowing me to work on topics like this that very few other people are covering online. I'll see you all in the next one.